In my opinion, the best driver of 2024 has to be the PXG0311 Black Ops range. For me, this has been absolutely fantastic. I got fitted into this range earlier on this year and got to try the Tour version, which I think is outstanding. But what's going to be coming in 2025 from the guys at PXG? So this is a series I've been doing the last couple of weeks. I don't know what's coming from any of the big brands yet. So before I sign my life away for an embargo, I like to just have a think about potentially where the brands could go. So I've done this for TaylorMade, I've done this for Ping, we're gonna be doing it for some of the big brands as well. So this driver for me has set the standard for PXG because I'm not like, in the past, PXG drivers haven't performed for me. I haven't liked them. I've been in fittings and just they just haven't really done it for me at all. I did the fitting for the 0311 and it just felt absolutely fantastic. The Black Ops range has been a little bit of a game changer. And the reasoning for that is, the multi-material design has totally transformed not only what kind of ball speed you get with this, but also just how you get that launch. So you can see we have that lovely carbon crown on there. That makes it feel and sound absolutely gorgeous. We flip it over, we also have the carbon sole. We also have this kind of tri weight in here. So in the right settings, this driver can be 10K inertia. It can. So we have the Ping G430 10K. That's obviously a 10K inertia marketed driver. The TaylorMade QI 10 Max was the 10K driver, but PXG never really kind of marketed this as a 10K driver. I don't think they felt the necessity to, but where do they go from here? The big thing here that PXG can't do, they cannot make this mistake. Let me just hit one and then I'll show you because the, it's so easy to undo a lot of good work, isn't it? Just because you think that you need another driver out there and all your rivals are doing it. That feels and sounds so good off this face. So I don't think PXG can afford a backward step. And I'm a huge believer in, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Or don't, try, don't try to fix it? Don't fix it. don't fix it, sorry. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Good job we've got Bobby today, isn't it? Because it's so easy to go and try and chase a little bit more speed, try and chase a little bit more forgiveness, maybe even try and make it look a little bit sleeker. But what PXG don't do generally is stick to that kind of January release. I think they might start doing that now because they've got a driver that does compete with the TaylorMade, with the Callaway, with all the other drivers, the Ping, for example, that they always come out that first week of January, don't they? So will we see a new PXG driver on the horizon in January? That's the first question we have to ask ourselves. I think potentially we might do because I think they see themselves in the running and in that race with the big brands now, whereas before, I think very much it was a case of, right, I'm gonna release a driver when I want to because we think we make the best drivers on the planet. And that was very much the kaboom baby way, wasn't it? Whereas now they actually probably do make some of the best drivers on the planet. Surely then the marketing team goes into overdrive and goes, you know what, let's put another one out there. So potentially that might happen. Again, I don't know anything that's coming or not coming or whatever, but where would you go if you were PXG? Because one of the big kind of, paradigm shifts as it were sorry the pun on the word paradigm that's the first time i've heard the word paradigm used correctly in the last two years but is when pxg went from being this super expensive really mega high-end luxury brand to actually focusing on making really really good performing golf clubs that people can afford and people will put in the bag so these are still expensive don't get me wrong i'm not saying these are now a cheap budget option although the 0211 was absolutely outstanding for the price i bought one of those brand new off the PXG website and it performed incredibly well. So and so I bought the hybrid as well. Right, I hate this talks on the glove as well. Right, now the mud's all out of the way. I think potentially they might introduce another budget range. So I was lucky enough to go out to PXG Scottsdale, visit them when they released the Gen 7 irons. And obviously the 031 run, run, the 0311 range is the kind of higher end, more performance range, isn't it? Maybe that stays and maybe we get another Gen 7 or Gen something driver. You know, something a little bit kind of lower budget, a little bit of something that's probably got less tech in it and probably something that buys the guys at PXG time to try and produce something better than this 0311 Black Ops because I don't think it's going to be an easy task for them, especially when they've had people potentially who haven't really liked the product 
then they've just shown them the new product which is really really good and they've totally changed people's mind on it because it's a very hard thing to do in the golf space to change someone's mind on a product or a brand or on both so now i think pxg actually make one of the best all-round bags in the game. I think the 0311 T irons are phenomenal. They're up there with the tailor-made P770s in that kind of sleek look, hollow body performance. And again, they're kind of level with them with price as well now. The Sugar Daddy wedges are fantastic. I've tested them. I actually had a hold of them on one of those in Scottsdale on the Bad Little Nine. That was, I did. I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I did. The Battle Ready Putters. So I, I would never, ever stand here and say to you, I'll have a PXG putter in my bag. But Bobby's going to edit in a little bit of a reel of all my putts that I've been using with the Hercules Battle Ready Putter because it is really, really good. And again, I wouldn't have thought that. Now we have the performance ball as well. So you could literally now start to see tour players with a full PXG bag. Whereas before they had tour players, but they didn't necessarily have, they definitely didn't have the ball because PXG didn't make a ball. So this is where potentially for the marketing terms, do they focus on a new driver? Or do they keep focusing on, right, we make the best full bag in golf, which is potential. Bobby, this is for three fairways in a row. I am a machine today. That's outrageous. That's outrageous. And the beauty about this is the tour version looks even better. I brought the standard version out to show you for today's video, but the tour version is a little bit sleeker. I'll put it on screen now for you. It has more of a kind of little inertia generator thing there. They don't like it when I say that because inertia generator is a telemade thing, isn't it? But for me, that's pretty much what it is. So it's a very interesting time of year as well, because if you're thinking about getting a new driver, maybe you're thinking about buying a driver as a gift for someone for Christmas. If you are, then I want to be your friend because it's not a cheap thing to do anymore, is it? But you might want to kind of hold back because if you're going to go and spend £500, £600 on a new driver now, there will be something coming out in January, not necessarily from PXG, not necessarily from, well, any brands, but if we look at the cycles of the big brands, your TaylorMade, your Callaway, Titleist are always a little bit earlier, we've just had the GT range, haven't we? Ping always released something in January, always really in line with the kind of PGA show, which we always go to and have a great time at. But I just think it almost kills the market now of, you know, like you're not really gonna go and buy a new driver and get fitted for it in October onwards, really, especially here in the UK, because as you can see, the leaves are falling off and the season's nearly over. So realistically, I don't know where you would potentially go when it comes to buying a new driver. But I wholeheartedly think that PXG do see themselves in that conversation now of being one of, if not the best brand when it comes to driver fairway, hybrid, irons, wedges, putter, ball. And the fact that they've managed to do that in, again, such a kind of short space of time. I was lucky enough to spend some time with Dr. Bob Parsons and interview him. And some of the answers he gave were pretty like staggering about he just didn't have an arrogance about he can make better clubs, but he had a real air of confidence about it. And I like that. I think not necessarily do you have to think about marketing, 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 marketing. It's just more, right, well, I want one of these clubs and I'm really, really rich, so I can afford to pay some engineers to make clubs that I want to play. By the way, Bobby, have you seen how far down that drive is to the par five? Oh. That's ridiculous, isn't it? So what about if... The new PXG driver for 2025 is that. And I think that's what might well happen. I honestly don't think that it's gonna be a case of, we need to release a new one, we need to rush one out, because I don't think that's Mr. Bob Parsons style. I don't think it's PXG style. I think they could almost run with, guys, if you want to go and spend big money on a driver, you don't want it to be obsolete in 12 months time, then we could be the brand for you. We could be the brand that says, we think our product is that good. Is the mud on the bottom of there? No, it's very clean. Oh, it's very clean. I think they could be the brand that says, we are that confident with our product, we don't need to release one every year. Because we all know that if we do talk about new drivers, we talk about a TaylorMade, a Callaway, a Ping, a Titleist, it's marginal gains at best, isn't it? Like often we refer to it as like a Formula One car. If you can knock off a couple of tenths of a second, you're gonna be further up, you're gonna be better. If you can hit it a little bit straight and maybe a little bit further with your driver, then you should kind of see a little bit of a benefit in the long run. I can't remember the last time we saw a driver released that was such a big leap for one brand. Now, I'm not saying that this is a big leap ahead of any of the other big brands, but this was a massive leap for PXG. And I think rather than rushing the next one out there, we're a lot more likely to see them just go, nope, we still think this is the best. We still think that this competes against 
tailor-made against ping against all the other big brands so really for me i absolutely you see that there i think i've just had a little heart attack those pheasants absolutely me up then so guys, if you disagree and you think there is going to be a new driver from Peak Sheep, what do you think it's going to be? What do you think it's going to be called? What do you think the story is going to be behind it? I think they double down with the fittings. PXG do some of the best fittings in the world, up and down this country, up and down the United States, up and down all different countries around the world. So potentially, I think we might see PXG go, right, even if you've got one of these drivers, come back in for a fitting. Let's see if your shaft needs altering. Let's see if these weights need moving around a little bit. A bit more of a retro fit because potentially that might be why you see a bit of a game. Your game changes throughout the period that you own the club. If you can just fit it again, then you don't need to spend a ton of money. And that could be the thing that gets PXG customers coming back and coming back and coming back because they know they're sick and tired of drivers becoming obsolete. Whereas don't make them obsolete, just make them better and better and better.